Hi, welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Alice, Associate Professor in the Department of Microbiology. In today's lecture, let's look into the laboratory diagnosis of bacterial infections. So, in this particular lecture, we'll be covering the different sample collection methods, the direct detection methods which include microscopy, antigen detection and various molecular uh, detection and various culture methods and various culture media and various identification methods which include conventional as well as automated and antimicrobial susceptibility testing. This is covered by Dr. Priyadarshini Shanmugam in a separate lecture, various serological testing methods various molecular methods and also typing methods. Now, why do we need a bacterial identification? Yes, it definitely helps us to identify the causative agent and helps us to know the clinical significance of the isolate, say whether it is a pathogen or a common cell. Example, if you take a sputum sample, it will be loaded with common cell bacteria so only when you identify the bacteria, you'll be able to know whether the isolate is a pathogen or a common cell. So this will guide the physician whether to start the antimicrobial therapy. And we know that these bacteria have aberrant antimicrobial profiles. So identification of bacteria is very important to carry out the susceptibility testing and to give appropriate treatment to the patient. Next, it also helps in surveillance. To find out the incidence and prevalence rate of a particular infection in a hospital or in a community. Say in a hospital, you can note down the prevalence of say methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Or say in a community, you can make out the prevalence of certain infectious diseases like diphtheria, cholera, so, and which helps you to establish some infection control measures. And these uh, infecting organisms definitely will pose a risk in the hospital as well as to the public. So, you can initiate infection control measures like say in case of MRSA, you can go for contact precautions and in the case of tuberculosis, you can go for airborne precaution. In the case of diphtheria, you can go for droplet precaution. So now let's move on to the specimen collection. So what are all the precautions that has to be taken while collecting sample from the patient? So first and foremost thing is we have to adhere to the standard precautions or the universal precautions, wearing gloves, mask, etc. And it's better to collect the sample before the start of antibiotics. And also, it's very important to collect the sample without any contamination, especially contamination of the indigenous flora. This happens while collecting blood sample for culture. So it's necessary to adhere to proper uh, skin decontamination procedure like use of alcohol and chlorhexidine and then uh, the exception, acceptance and rejection criteria. So improperly collected sample or improperly labeled sample should be rejected by the laboratory. Say a sample received in formalin has to be rejected by the laboratory. So these criteria should be strongly adhered by the laboratory personnel. And then anaerobic culture. So, if you suspect for any anaerobic organism in a particular specimen, the sample has to be transported immediately to the laboratory and swabs uh, are rejected if you expect for an anaerobic bacteria. It's better to collect aspirates in case of the identification of anaerobic organism in a particular clinical specimen. And then the specimen transport. All specimens that are collected has to be transported immediately to the laboratory. There should not be any delay. If there is any delay, appropriate storage conditions has to be maintained. Say if it is a blood sample 
or if it is a CSF sample, it should not be refrigerated. It should be kept in a incubator at 37 degrees Celsius or it has to be transported immediately to the laboratory. Say a CSF has to be transported within 15 minutes to the laboratory. And say, same in the case of urine and stool sample, if there is any delay, it has to be refrigerated. So, specimen store, transport and specimen storage is very important to isolate the bacteria from the clinical specimen. So, these are the various clinical specimens that we usually receive in the microbiology laboratory. As so in the case of sepsis or in the case of cardiovascular infection, we go for a blood culture. So, you can go for a conventional blood culture or you can go for an automated blood culture. So, conventional, go for a brain-heart infusion broth or in case of automated blood culture, you can go for a bactic blood culture bottle. So, in the case of adults, paired samples will be collected, say 8 to 10 ml of the blood will be collected by adhering to proper disinfection protocols. And uh, in case of serological investigation, say 2 ml of the blood can be collected in a vacutina. In the case of gastrointestinal tract infection, you can go for tool sample or rectal swabs can be collected. In the case of urinary tract infection, a midstream urine or suprapubic aspirate or a catheterized urine can be collected in a sterile container and this has to be transported immediately and if there is any delay, it has to be stored at 4 degrees Celsius. In the case of skin and soft tissue infection, pus or wound swab, or aspirates in case of any anaerobic infection or tissue biopsy should be collected in a sterile container and it has to be transported immediately to the lab. And in the case of respiratory tract infection, if it's going to be a upper respiratory tract infection, nasopharyngeal swabs can be collected or throat swabs can be collected. If it is a lower respiratory tract infection, sputum sample can be collected, but as a clinically least relevant specimen because it gets contaminated over the oral flora but it is very easy to collect. The other samples of in case of lower respiratory in a tract infection include endotracheal aspirate, bronchoalveolar lavage, bronchial wash or bronchial brushing. All these can be collected. And in the case of ocular infection, conjunctival swabs, corneal scrapings can be collected and it has to be inoculated immediately into the medium or to be transported immediately. In the case of ear infections, say in the case of outer ear infection, ear swabs can be collected or in the case of inner ear infection, uh, no aspirates can be collected and again they have to be transported immediately to the laboratory. So these are the various samples that is collected uh, adhering to appropriate sample collection protocols.